first one that we'll look at is a reaction of a halogen radical with a carbon hydrogen bond. So remember that X is a generic for different halogens, so it could be bromine, chloride, iodine, fluorine. Okay, so one electron comes from, from the radical, one electron comes from the carbon hydrogen bond to, to make a new bond between the H and the X, and one electron goes onto the carbon to form a new radical. In that process, what we get is a carbon radical plus an HX molecule. The next reaction that we'll look at is a reaction of a halogen radical with a carbon-carbon double bond. You'll notice this time that I didn't draw all of the electrons in for the halogen, uh, only the, the uh, radical electron. So this will donate one electron from the halogen, we will get one electron from the pi bond, and then the other electron from the pi bond has to go into one of the, one of the carbons. Okay, so you'll notice that I, I pushed one electron towards one carbon to form the new bond between carbon and X, the halogen, and the other carbon uh, ends up with the radical. So if I redraw that, here's your radical, There's your new bond to halogen, and there you have your product. The third type of reaction that we'll look at with radicals are radicals reacting with each other. In this example, I have two halogen radicals. Uh, where again, I'm only showing the radical electron, not all the other uh, lone pairs. So in this case, each one gives one electron to form a new bond between the two. And in the end, we have no radical. Okay, so let's keep exploring radical reactions and we'll look at radical halogenation of alkanes. In this case, I've got a generic halogen that can be either Cl2 or Br2. And the reason that it's only Cl2 or Br2 is that fluorine reacts too quickly and is too violent. Iodine reacts too slowly and, and so neither one of those are good examples. So what's going to happen in this reaction? The overall change in the reaction is replacement of hydrogen with halogen, and then we also form a, a molecule of, of HX as a byproduct. Okay? So the question is, how does this happen? Uh, radical mechanisms always have three steps in them, and, and this is vital information for you to know. You really need to know all three of these steps. We start with initiation. That is formation of radicals from non-radicals. There's propagation which is transferring a radical from one molecule to another and termination this is the reaction of two radicals form a non-radical species. Let's look at initiation first. Something has to cause the bond between the two halogens to break. And so a lot of times we'll write that as H nu. H nu, if you remember right, E equals 
h nu is the energy of a photon of light. So what this really means anytime we say h nu is that means that we're using light energy to break these apart. Sometimes we'll also use heat to cause this to happen. Okay, so you'll either see a delta, which means that we've got heat, or you'll see uh, h nu, which means that there's light energy causing the two to break. So how does it happen? This bond breaks with one electron going to each chlorine, and what we get in the end is two chlorine radicals. Okay, remember that each one of those chlorines also has three lone pairs as well, but what we really care about right now is the radical. Okay, so that's an initiation step. We started with no radicals, we end up with a radical. We end up with two radicals. So the next step is a propagation step, where we start with one radical here on the chlorine, and our methane molecule that I'm using is just an example molecule. It's actually not a very good molecule for this, but uh, it's just a small molecule to show you how it works. It has no radicals, so it's a neutral molecule plus a radical. So what's going to happen? The chlorine adds its radical. The bond between the carbon and hydrogen breaks with one electron going to make a new HCl bond and one electron going on onto the carbon. So what we end up with is a CH3 radical plus a molecule of HCl. So that's only one possible propagation step. You can have another propagation step uh, that could get you to your main product where the carbon radical donates its electron to a molecule of chlorine, which then causes that to break you end up with your newly formed CH3Cl and another chlorine radical. Okay, anytime in a propagation you always start with a radical and end with a radical and that's what keeps the radical going. So for termination you could have a CH3 radical react with a chlorine radical Each one donates their one electron to form a new bond between carbon and chlorine. To make your new molecule. You could also have, as we kind of talked about earlier, two chlorines could come together. Two chlorine radicals. To reform Cl2. That's a reason that usually when you're doing these type of reactions, you want to keep the concentration low of your radical so that it doesn't react with itself to make a molecule of chlorine again.